Well, yeah, in the first inning, he got off to a little slow start. But, I mean, uh, you know, when D. Gordon hits that opening pitch, uh, you know, for a triple, which sometimes he can ambush you like that, and then, you know, to hold him, you know, to one run. And that's what I told Joe. I said, hey, man, you, you just learned damage control today because that could have turned into a three or four run uh, inning. But uh, damage control is the key, especially for a young, young pitcher. And after that, he was masterful. Uh, you know, he had quite a few three-two counts there, but a couple double plays got him out of trouble. And um, you know, he made some pitches when he had to, when he had to make them. That battle that he had with D. Gordon uh, mm -hmm. when D. was trying to swipe a bag, for him to go through that whole process and be patient and to eventually get the caught stealing. Right. Uh, how, how impressive is that for a 22-year-old to kind of Well, that's what I mean. Down yeah, I mean, you know, the game appears slow to Joe anyway. I mean, he's 22, but, you know, he comes from a great family. His brother's been in pro ball for a while. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> you, know, uh, you know, he knows what he's doing. And he's not intimidated or by any situation. And uh, the fact that he threw the ball so accurately to, to first base, because how many times have you seen guys try to pick guys off and, and throw the ball away? So, yeah, I mean, that was great. And then Wilson, you know, threw one on the, on the money. And, uh, you know, D. Gordon's hard to throw out. And, uh, you know, that was a big play. You hate for D. Gordon to, to get on base, especially with none or one out, because, I mean, this guy can wreak havoc with the end. You know, he's turned to a heck of a player over there. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to do something because those, you know, the lefties are, are poison. Oh, they had some good lefties over there. And he was using his high fastball and uh, the splitter or change. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. You got to ask him or Mike Maddox. But, uh, you know, you got to have something, <clears throat> you know, that's off speed and hopefully that goes, that goes down, you know, to tease some of the hitters with because if not, then they'll just sit on your fastball, and uh, uh, you know if you're not getting your changeup, I mean your slider over, then you turn into a one-pitch pitcher. And so, uh, you know he's he's well, you know, beyond his years and in, in uh, maturity. That splitter changeup is the one he was developing in spring training. Mm -hmm. I think Pap taught him that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Are you surprised how quickly he kind of seems comfortable throwing that? Well, hey man. Um, you know, he's an athlete. I mean, this guy can hit, he can run. I mean, and athletes don't take long, you know, to adjust, and he's an athlete. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you just hope that he doesn't fall in love with it because a lot of times a guy gets a new pitch and he'll fall in love with it, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, to use it at the right time, um, a lot of that's in the hands of Wilson, you know, who, who directed him, you know, well through the game. Given how many uh, opportunities Ward has had already, mm -hmm. Well, you know something, when you're not going good and things are a little tough, it seems like I've been there. It seems like every time I, I'd get up, there'd be bases loaded <laughs> or runners in scoring position. But, uh, you know, that, that kind of breaks the ice. You know, we were trying something early. I was trying to get him going by hitting and running and, and moving runners, and sometimes that gets guys going. And uh, so, I mean, you knew it was going to happen sooner or later, but that was, yeah. I mean, he's had, he's had quite a few opportunities with runners in scoring position, and maybe that can – Get him going and, and get him hot. You seem particularly fired up, I guess, that you were pointing in the dugout stuff. Was that mm -hmm. a, I well, I guess. Well, I was telling Joe's you got to believe, just like I told uh, um, Strasburg in that same situation the other day. You know, I mean, this is your game, you know, and uh, you got to you got to think it to think it and believe it for it to happen. And um, you know, I just from the school that have. You know, the mind can move mountains. It can certainly move a ball, you know. So um, I've, I've been a, in that same situation where Tom Basorti used to tell us all the time, you got to believe. And I thought it was like, yeah, right, you know. And then, boom, some things happen, and they keep happening, and they keep happening, and then now I'm a believer. But to believe you would get the win, I guess. Yeah. Like well, well, believe that you're going to get the hits to get the win. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, man. I mean, it's it's tough when you start the season, um, <clears throat> you know, hitless, and uh, you can't help but count. But but you know, there's a there's a long way to go, and there's no difference between o offers now and offers in June or September. It's just that you know, 
you don't have that many at bats. But uh, you know the glory and of, of this is that you can go out there and get. You know, I believe that two hits a, a day for a week will solve any ill that you have in baseball. So you get two hits a day and a couple walks in there and nine hit bats. Well, heck, you're hitting probably close to 400 at this time because you don't have any at bats. You know, your your batting average can go up and down like an elevator at this time of the year. So um, I remember one year I started out one for 21. And then I end up third in the league and hitting with 321. So if you just you, – you, I used to always believe that you get what you can early until you get what you want later. So. It's been uh, particularly nice to see that what you saw him trying in the spring training. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, I mean, big time. I mean, he's getting more and more confidence. And, uh, you know, we certainly can use, uh, you know, that sinker late in the game. And uh, – so I just hope that we get some two-out RBI hits because that's the one thing that's been been eluding us lately. So. Bryce has five walks and no strikeouts so far. Do you see the you know the same patient approach you had last year? Mm -hmm. Continuing. Well, yeah. I mean, once you learn patience, then you you have it for a long time. But um, you got to have patience because I mean he got MVP on his back. So. You know, if not on his back besides his name, people know who Bryce Harper is. Um, after seeing them for one series, I'm curious your early impressions of the Marlins as a team. That well, they got a good team. I mean, they got a real good team. Um, you know, they got some guys up and down that lineup that can hit. They got some speed. Um, I haven't seen I haven't seen all their pitchers yet, but they got a good team. I mean, I when I was with uh, TBS last year or for ESPN, one of them, I, I picked them in the – and the Marlins go, I mean, them and the uh, Blue Jays go to the World Series. So that's what I, I'm not taking them this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay.